Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we're going to be talking about how you can write your stress away. And we have the authors of this lovely book, Write Your Stress Away, Tame the Tension in Your Life, Diane Harding Price and Susan Ives McCollum. So welcome guys. Thanks Thank CJ, it's nice to be with you. So I know that this um, book came as a part of this Get Well project, which is Be Well, Get Well, be well, stay well. And I was wondering, um, Dan, if you can tell us a little bit about that mission of your project. Absolutely. The, the Get Well Project is the product of a lifelong friendship uh, that Sue and I have shared, really focused on um, getting well, being well, and staying well. And um, we both have shared a use of writing throughout our lifetime through the ups and downs of life. And um, in particular, each of us happened to be diagnosed with a life-threatening disease back in the uh, mid-90s. And so it's about giving back and helping others to get well, be well, and stay well. Uh, Stress is a big focus of the Get Well Project, using writing to help manage stress, which is uh, what our book is about. We've developed a writing method called Write to Be Well, and um, that writing method is really foundational to the work we do uh, with the Get Well Project, and also helping helping individuals find joy, positivity, and purpose in life through writing, as well as managing health. And uh, our definition of health is it's a continuum, not just the absence of uh, illness or disease Mm. so that's what the get well project is about um susan i was wondering if you can tell me so it's um writing became something that you both shared as friends um what kind of writing were you doing at the time i know that you have this right to be well kind of process Mm -hmm. now but how did it evolve what were you writing and how did that process develop over time Good question. Um, I think we both started with journal writing, uh, just pouring out on paper, you know, whatever our concerns and thoughts and challenges were. Um, A lot of those journals we've thrown away since then. (laughs) But um, our process then began to develop because we started to see um, when we would talk about journal writing that we were just repeating the same stories over and over again. And so we knew that we needed to step out of the story or to look at it in a different way in order to make the changes that we were desiring. So that's um, how the process got started and then how we started to develop it. Mm. And then what was the, how did you move out of the repetitive story? And I, I have a very similar experience that I was writing, I was writing as part of a writing class and um, it felt like um, that that scene from The Shining where he's just <laughs> writing red rum like over and over again, but he feels like he's writing something profound. And then I, I read and I was processing my dad's death and I would literally write the story. And then like a couple months later, I'd write the story again, forgetting that I had written the story, which to me was just very illuminative, like thinking, wow. Why am I writing a story over and over again? So how do you get people to no longer repeat the story? And what do you, as your, your experience as healers, how, how, what have you learned about repeating stories, what they mean, and how you can stop them? And, or, 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 sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say one of the ways that you can step out of that repetitive story is by doing what we call third-person writing. Mm. Um, Suddenly, I mean, you you become a a best friend or you become a doctor or you become really anybody who's sort of looking down on the situation that you're in and you write the story from their perspective. Mm. And that does start to help break that uh, trend of telling the same story over and over again. Mm. I'll let Diane add to that as well. The uh, yes, the the other part of it is it's um, and that's how we created the method with write to be well, um, is that there is a progression. So it's writing the story and it it models a bit the coaching model that says 
where are you now? Where do you want to be? What matters? And how do you get there? And we use writing every step of the way and proven writing techniques that have really, over the decades, shown the benefit. So to get out of the story, it's a progression of the story. Um, so it's writing in the first person, writing in the third person, and then shifting the writing to really exploring your values and writing about values, and then moving on to creating an affirmation that defines what you want your future to look like. Okay, so, so it's where are you now? Where, where are you now? Do you, where do you want to go? Exactly. Um, what matters and how to get there. How to get there. How to so, get there. And okay. how to get there is creating a plan. And then the last step is reflecting on it. And that's the part where the hard work comes in because it's, it's easy to make a plan. It's another thing to accomplish it. And a matter of writing reflectively so that you can be brutally honest with yourself and your confidence and um, becomes um, one of our one of our clients and and uh, writers uh, actually wrote to us saying that the reflective work he was doing in his journal was like a self coach and a self counselor, mm -hmm. and we were very excited when we heard that. And tell me about, so you said the values and affirmation, where does that come into the process? So that's after you do the reflection? Is... No. Okay. It, it's, it, it, I'm sorry. It's actually right after you write your story. Uh -huh. um, then the second step is the um, affirmative writing where you explore your values uh, okay. and connect them to the future. Okay, can can we practice one? Because I actually have something. I was just meditating before um, arriving here. And what was interesting is um, I used to work at Microsoft where it was a very hardcore environment where your intellect would be the way that you were valued and measured. And um, I've since left that field and I'm helping a pro I'm bringing being brought into that kind of work recently helping a friend do marketing and I've noticed how even though I've grown as a person there's a part of me that's like in this old version of myself that is still like fighting to get my ideas understood arguing about what should be in the copy of so and so and I was like, well, look at that ego going in there trying to get its way in control and thinking, wow, okay, so where are you now? I'm back to where I was many years ago. Where do you want to go? I want to go in a place where we're working collaboratively but not kind of fighting for whose words get chosen in the thing that gets published. You know, this just seems weird to me. I can't, I can't go there anymore. What matters, I think, is less, it's about the personal relationship, but then also creating great quality work. How do I get there? How, how I, after I meditated, it was like, you know, I need to actually just make sure that the personal relationship is good. So I wrote to the person and said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit of tension here and I want to get a sense of how we can best work together. Um, because I want you to have your creative freedom, and at the same time, I need to have the market research that we've done reflected in what you're doing. Um, so that's my version of that. So now how would I go to values? So my values, I guess, are – how do I do the affirmation then? If, that, if that's my story, how do I go to my affirmation and move to a place of further reflection? And there's one little piece we'd like to weave into the story part. Sure. Think of the story as two, three parts. And as Sue earlier said, you write your story, which is where you are now. And then it's writing your story now, but from somebody else's perspective. And that is the, you know, we, we can get stuck in our own heads, um, sometimes stuck in our own emotions. So by bringing, writing that third person perspective um, would have been an interesting piece for you to write what you thought the person you were helping was seeing in you. Yeah. And then when you went and called and reached out to them, what in fact were they thinking of you? Yeah. So here's my perspective is I'm very intense and driven and very um, 
and then intimidating. So he, this person's an introvert. So someone like myself can be terrifying for an introvert because I'm very mm -hmm. like strong personality, very driven. And people think that I care a lot more than I care because I have a certain voice <laughs> quality that comes across. <laughs> so that's what I'm assuming is happening is he's terrified, scared, and and like and then it's bringing out some type of fighting scenario in his perspective and so i don't that's my sense about it yeah that's yeah. my but it also it also sounds like you uh value the camaraderie um uh, working together in a collaborative way and so that is the value piece that then you would overlay on your story and that would take you into the affirmative writing. Yeah. Okay. So I would say that, um, sadly, I value competitive more than collaborative, but I <laughs> okay. know that personally, in order to get the, I, I'm, I value competitive, meaning how do we get the very best product out there? And I believe that that kind of like fighting it out is kind of part of getting mm. it out there. But then I also believe collaborating is part. So I believe in both collaboration and com competition and balancing those things. So that's so I also heard stir stirred in there. And when you were sharing um, that you value what you've learned about yourself, and that you don't want to be at all, you don't want it all to be about ego. Yeah. And you you value this new sense of yourself and really living true to that. Yes. So that's I heard that loud and clear that that was another value. Spiritual so value. Yes, the God. spiritual value. So by right, you know, by getting those two values down and really seeing the tension between those two values and writing about that just is amazing in ah, terms okay, of it. then writing, you know, these are, I, I value these things and creating the affirmation that starts with an I statement that says, I am in the present tense, a, you know, caring, non-egocentric person who cares about the best quality ever to deliver to my friend. Mm, okay, got it. And then and the we're... essence of that then becomes what you want it to look like when you're working together, mm. or what you want your future together. Mm, okay, got it. So it's, um, it that's the values. And then the affirmation is the I am. And then the writing is that's the new story I'm going to write. Is that the is that what we're referring to as the right? Well, I'm just trying to understand your process. So, mm -hmm. is this is this a mini version of the right to be well process? Yes, I would say that it is. Um, then you, after you've done your affirmation, you can write a future story. You know, what would you prefer that this looks like? Ah, okay. So, like, what and, would I want it to look like going forward? Okay, right. I like that. I like that a lot. And, and then, then that you... takes you to the third step. Okay. <laughs> You're not quite there yet. <laughs> I'm not done yet. <laughs> yes. And the, the third step is to set some goals oh. to come up with an action plan. And we call that action scripting. Come up with um, as many ideas as you can and decide which ones you're going to move forward on. Okay. And, and then, then the, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Diane. go ahead, Sue. No, go ahead. Then the last step is to read everything that you've written and reflect on it and decide if you can really commit to what this action plan is. If okay. you can't commit to it, maybe you've bitten off more than you can chew right now, and maybe you need to break it down into some smaller steps. I love it. Okay, got So it's the coaching process of... You know, if I were to coach someone, it was it's kind of like what we've been doing live. However, mm -hmm. this would be basically coaching myself, as you said, your friend, Dan, you said mm -hmm. your friend was doing. So it's basically coaching yourself through the process of revelation or uh, um, introspection or, or a plan even. I love it. This has been super useful for me. And hopefully people have go a good sense of the pre process that you um, included. Is there anything else to the process? I know that there's to the um, 
the steps are writing your story down. Um, can you give me the overview again? Because there's the values, and then there's a future story, and then the goals. Are those? Is that? Yeah. I'll, I'm going to give you an acronym. Yes, perfect. The the acronym is Sage. Okay. Because you are very wise if you use this method. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so S stands for story. Tell your story. A stands for write your affirmation, connect it to your values. G stands for set your goals. Mm -hmm. And E stands for evaluate everything that you've written and commit to action. And it's it. all right here in our book. <laughs> I love it. Write your stress away. Tame the tensions in your life. We've been talking to Diane Harding Price and Susan uh, Susan Ives McCollum about their book. And in the next section, we're going to be talking about um, their own personal writing and what they learned about um, how their writing helped them with their own stress levels and their their physical um, illnesses that came about, and then also. Um, kind of the mental and emotional front and how that could help. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks. It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support. Love and blessings.